We recently had a question on our comments asking us to recommend one of the videos that we've done on how to pack a spider from a relatively new spider owner who hasn't had the opportunity to do much traveling yet. I thought that should be easy. We do these all the time. So I went back and began to dig and I realized we do not have one that is any younger than 2019, which is about the time we bought the Freedom Trailer. So as we are going to be doing a trip down to the Keys, the Florida Keys, over the 97 mile overseas highway, well, we're gonna be spending several days down there and just taking the spider without the trailer. We need to do a packing plan for that and that would be a great time to do a video on the topic. Now the Spider itself has 41 gallons, as the manufacturer refers to it, as internal storage space. I guess gallons is easier to visualize in cubic feet, but that is the total amount of storage space. And we have found that in the past, when we've done trips without our Freedom Trailer, that that was sufficient. It took us a little while to get used to it, but we began to pare down what we needed and what we didn't need. It works. We've actually gone up to eight days uh, on our trip to Alabama many years ago uh, without uh, any trailer and just carrying what we can carry on the internal stores of the Spider. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Now for our spider, we have plenty of storage space. The trunk area is plenty deep. That's where we keep uh, a lot of our quickly needed accessible things, such as the toolkit, ball cap, sunglasses, things like that. Then to the side, on the right side, we keep our rain gear. It stays in here because, well, we get wet a lot. Rain jackets, liners for our jackets. Uh, if we don't want to put on the heavy jackets, we can put on the lighter ones and rain pants. They are currently unloaded because they're being uh, repackaged to be put in here. But normally they live right there. On the far side, I keep my windshield cleaning supplies in the little plastic bag. And this is the area that Miriam uses for her clothing and equipment. And then I have this little aftermarket pouch for you know placing my cell phone in my voice recorder or anything else I need to stick in there to have quickly accessible in addition to our in addition the spider actually has a little glove box area which I keep uh, a notepad and some pens in then we have the aftermarket storage area where I store odds and ends that you may need on the trip little snacks that sort of thing and over here is my water bottle, so I can always have access to either uh, cold water or I may change it out for my coffee holder uh, container so I can actually drink some coffee when I'm on the road. The front area is the largest single storage area. Typically, I will put my laptop in there along with the tan backpack, and that gives us pretty much all the storage area that we need for... Uh, for travel. And this is my toolkit that fits nicely into this pouch. So what's actually in the toolkit? I added this recently after we had the tow ball incident uh, in Canada last spring. Uh, a pair of pliers, another Leatherman, extra set of fuses, some wire ties, some duct tape, uh, an extensible wrench to give myself a little bit of uh, leverage here. And this is for my lug nuts on the front tires. The standard BRP toolkit that comes with the Spider, some super glue. And then here is my uh, tire repair kit, a can of fix a flat and a small air compressor. Now we're going to talk about what I actually pack. Your 
load and your equipment that you take will be different depending on the need uh, for that particular trip. Um, I typically will take this pack. I like it because it fits in the forward cargo area and it is uh, has multiple compartments so I can keep everything organized so I know exactly where it's at. So we'll start to the far right. Um, over here I carry a small uh, toiletry kit, a small first aid kit. This is not designed to handle any significant injuries. You know, little boo-boos and scrapes and scratches and things like that. Um, this is my general purpose travel utility kit. I keep in here uh, a small towel, um, compass, whistle, can opener, fire starter, toilet tissue, and, and things like that that I have found over the years it works for me. For clothing, we'll typically take a three-day supply of clothing and then do laundry. I have uh, undergarments, a, uh, a base layer of capoline, which is my favorite garment for warm weather, a t-shirt, and then a pair of slacks. Typically, I'm wearing my motorcycle pants when I'm actually riding. Over here is the kitchen area that I would take with me on most trips. Uh, bowl, coffee pot. Uh, it's actually a French press. I uh, store extra filters in this little cheese container. Water, my fuel for my stove, the stove itself, little uh, bandana to use as a dish towel, uh, and then the coffee cups. And nest inside of each other. So I have two of those cups. And then we go over to the food supply. I always like to carry a 24 hour supply of food with me when we travel, it's just so we, not that I plan on eating it necessarily, but it's nice to have that if you get into a hotel room late or you're in a place where there's no food available or you're stuck someplace where you're just hungry and want something to eat, you have food with you. We'll start with uh, breakfast. I have a, a container of instant grits, some spam a cereal bar, some instant coffee, and then I also keep ground coffee for the uh, coffee press. Then for lunch, I would have some uh, some beef jerky. I like this because it's sugar-free and it's really high quality. Uh, some palm crisp. This is not processed food as you would think of processed food. The ingredients here is just cheese, Parmesan cheese that's been cooked in a manner that makes it uh, kind of shelf-stable, and it gives it a crunch factor, which is really good to have. And then I like to always carry some olives to munch on so I get some vegetables. Makes Miriam happy. For my evening entree, one of my preferred to keep in the backpack, uh, even for long trips, is uh, uh, Mountain House. It's my preferred brand. I just like the flavor profile. And this is the beef stroganoff. This is actually two servings. So that comes in really, really handy. Now, the pack itself, uh, I like the molly straps to help you uh, strap stuff to the outside. You have multiple compartments. This is the first compartment. I keep some camp suds here for washing my hands, doing laundry, taking a bath, whatever I need. Uh, a pocket knife. Lighter. A Leatherman tool. And down deep inside here is a can opener, bottle opener, and wine opener, just in case. These are referred to as sporks, half spoon, half spoon and half fork. I carry two of those, one for me, one for Miriam. And then in here, I carry my personal, personal emergency locator beacon, which is a satellite-based emergency locator beacon. Um, except for the times we're actually in uh, really remote places, this is typically not activated or turned on. Um, but if we are going into the area where my cell phone will not uh, work or won't have cell service, I'll go ahead and activate the service on this so we'll have it so we can call for help should we need it. Uh, a flashlight, in addition to a headlamp, which I carry in the top compartment, because you never know when you're going to need to light stuff up uh, using a headlamp. And up here, this is my quick emer uh, charging supplies. On this side is the standard USB with a 110 outlet for charging my cell phone. And over here is the USB-C with a, uh, a plug, a 110 adapter for charging the GoPro that I'm currently using. And then you have the main compartment, which is uh, rather substantial and it has 
little pockets you can organize your gear in and keep it segregated so you can easily identify it and access it. Well guys, we're gonna slowly start wrapping up today's video. But I just wanted to say, when you're planning a trip, and you're planning on what to take, it's every trip is different on what you take, how you prepare for it, and it all depends on our personalities and our lifestyles and the climate we're gonna be in. Clearly, we're, uh, a trip down to the Florida Keys in the summertime will be vastly different than a trip in our climate today where it's in the 40s. So you have to take that in consideration. The only thing that seems to be an absolute for us is it's going to rain. So we always take rain gear. So as you work towards an idea of what you will take on trips, uh, if you're traveling by motorcycle or spider, start out with small trips, overnight trips, and just pack as light as you can. And after a few trips, you will work out what actually works for you and what doesn't work and what you need to take and what you don't need to take. And eventually you'll, you'll find that uh, no matter how much you plan, you'll always seem to forget something, but that gives you something to plan on for next time. <clears throat> so guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our travel-related content, just check out the rest of our channel. And don't forget to subscribe.